Well, all right, we're going to start this um, final review with a graph, well, a couple graphing questions. First one is written in standard form, and the second one, as you can see, is written in vertex form. So we're going to treat these two a little bit differently. Um, but we should know the general shape of each of these graphs, and it's going to be a parabola. So it means that the vertex will have to be the most important point at first as we um, as it just defines the starting point. So as I look at this one, I see that it has a negative leading coefficient, which means that this is going to be concave down when I get finished with it. To find the vertex of a graph in standard form, you want to um, find the, um, excuse me, the vertex by using this formula negative b over 2a. And so you have to know the values of a and b. As I look up here, I see that a is negative 1 and b is negative 6. So when I plug in a negative 6 and then ne negate it, it actually becomes a positive 6. And then 2 times negative 1 is going to be negative 2. And so this is going to equal negative 3. And that gives me my first value of that vertex. Now what I have to do is I have to run the negative 3 through this equation to find y. You have to be really careful with that negative that's standing out there in the front because um, well it just it just needs the order of operations needs to be handled correctly. So when I plug in a negative 3 and squared I get a positive 9 but then it's greeted by this negative which again reverts it back to a negative. So it'll be a negative 9 minus a 6 times a negative 3, which is actually going to convert it to a plus 18. So that's going to be negative 9 plus 18, which is um, 9. And then 9 minus 8 is equal to 1. So that vertex is at negative 3, 1. And now when I want to look at the general shape of this, and uh, as you know in class, we followed this 1, 3, 5, 7, pattern and since the leading coefficient is 1 I don't have to change that so I want to go over 1 and down 1 and then graph the reflection point over 1 and down 3 and graph the reflection point and then I want to this is really tricky folks um, there draw the general shape of that graph. Let's move on. Number two is much easier because you can actually see the vertex is actually staring you in the face. We have to remember what we talked about with the x, you always go opposite. So this is going to go to the left three. That's going to put me at negative three again and this is going to go down one. The up down works just fine. You want to think opposite when doing your left and right. So um, negative three, negative one puts me right there. And then as I see this number out in the front is a 2, so that's going to affect this 1, 3, 5, 7 pattern. We're just going to double each of these. And that gives you a 2, 6, 10. And um, you just simply go over 1 and up 2. And this has to be pretty precise, folks. I don't want you just looking at a graph and calculator and sketching it and then it being all in the wrong place. So uh, the next one's going to be over 1 and up 6. That puts me right out there. And then the reflection point would be right there. And then you want to do the best you can at sketching. Oh, this is pathetic. Um, sketching that curve. Let's move on. Okay, in, in the similar vein, we're going to be looking at factoring a few problems here. Um, the best thing to do, as we know, is to inspect it. And we want to look for something that may be common to each term. And there is. There's a 4 that is common to each term. So I want to factor it out. It's called the GCF, if you recall. And that's going to be... Nope. 28. Sorry. Sorry about that. All right. So um, now as I look at this trinomial. I want to see if there's factors of 28 that will add up to 11. And it looks like 7 and 4 work. 7, both of them negative. That'll give you your negative 11 in the, mid in the middle term. So no need to throw this into the box because um, it's just one of those easy ones. 
So this would be n minus 7, n minus 4. Now folks, this is where we're going to stop because the question doesn't say to solve it, it just says to factor it. And in like manner, this one's a trinomial. As I look at each term, there is no GCF, so it's ready to be factored. If we can't factor it, if we can't find the combination here, then um, we're just going to have to throw it into the quadratic formula. But since the instructions say to factor completely, I'm sure that we can probably find some combinations. So we want to look for uh, factors of negative 36 that um, will add up to negative 5. And it looks like that's going to be negative 9 times a positive 4. Let's check it. When I multiply those together, I get negative 36. And when I add those together, I get negative 5. Perfect. So it doesn't matter the order in which you put these numbers in the brackets. Um, just make sure your signs are correct. All right, let's move on to a few more factoring questions. This is so fun. All right, another one. Check for GCF. Not there. So let's set it up. And um, it's pretty plain to see that in order to get n squared, you have to have an n in the first position. We need to get 15. The, these two have to multiply out to equal 15. And then we want them to add up to negative 8. So it looks like that's going to be a negative 3 and a negative 5. Let's check it. Negative 3 plus negative 5 equals negative 8, and negative 3 times negative 5 equals positive 15. Again, perfect. The order doesn't matter in which you put these numbers, as long as you get the signs right. All right, here's number 6. I see a GCF of 3. It's common to both. I'm going to divide it out. Common mistake here is just to leave that a zero. Don't do that. All right. Then upon inspection, I see perfect square, perfect square. And you have to know this pattern, folks. A plus B, A minus B. In this case, it's going to be V plus 1, V minus 1. Again, the order of these don't matter. You can put the minus here or the plus here. But this is completely factored. All right. Last two. All right. This is a unique one because we have a u to the fourth. But if you recall in class, we treated this just like a trinomial that was quadratic, only we put a u squared and a u squared in that first position. As you can see, when I multiply those together, I get that u to the fourth. So again, I'm going to check this. I want these two numbers to multiply out to equal a negative 20. And I want the inside numbers to add up to a negative 1. That's easy. That's 5 and 4. How do we get the negative 1? Well, we'll negate the 5 and keep the 4 positive. So again, the order doesn't matter. This will be minus 5 plus 4. Do not be tempted to factor this. It is not factorable because it's not the difference of two perfect squares. It's the sum. doesn't work. All right. And then number 8. All right. Upon inspection, there are no GCFs. And I notice I have a perfect cube. And you should recognize that as also a perfect cube. It would be equal to 6 cubed. All right. And again, this is one of those ones, folks, where you have to know that little pattern. And it's a binomial times a trinomial. What we're going to do is we're going to put the little balloons on those threes and let them lift off. And I'm going to have my binomial. It's going to be used u plus 6. Then in the trinomial, I square the first term. I multiply these together and subtract. That's just what's in the template. And then I square the last term. And that concludes this first video of the final review. Stay tuned for more.